Good evening, everybody. Or good evening. Yeah, good evening, Rupiga. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you and with the company of Tom and Talia presenting this wonderful film that uh, is produced in one of the most excitement places in Colombia. Just to let you know that Colombia is a big country that is uh, divided uh, in two equal parts. Half of the country is plain and half of the country is uh, with mountains. But in the plain part lives only 5% of our population. But uh, part of this population have uh, its own culture and is what this film is trying to show us. So I'm very happy to share with you part of the deep culture of Colombia. And uh, in that matter, uh, we have the opportunity to be with uh, Tom Marsorley and with the Canadian Film Institute that is celebrating 25 years uh, presenting the uh, Latin American Film Festival here in Canada. So thank you very much, Tom, for this opportunity for Colombia to be present in, in, in your country, in Canada. And of course, congratulations for uh, uh, the, the successful history of this uh, festival. Thank you very much, Your, your Excellency. Um, it's a great honor to pre present uh, uh, Horsemen of Paradise as part of the festival and to have uh, presented it, I should say. Um, like you, uh, uh, like Colombia, Canada is a very large country uh, and we have our own plains, as you know, there are prairie provinces. Um, so it's a fascinating thing for me as a Canadian. Uh, this film um, spoke a lot to me in that sense of the relationship between um, individuals and their landscape. Uh, because most, uh, all Canadians are very much aware uh, of the power of the landscape uh, to, um, to threaten us, to nurture us, to uh, generate cultural responses, etc. So I think the film is a, a wonderful um, representative of Colombia here in the 25th anniversary of our Latin American Film Festival uh, in Ottawa, as, as you mentioned. And, and I want to thank on behalf of the Film Institute, the Embassy of Colombia for its amazing participation over the years, and of course, thanking the filmmakers of Colombia for their extraordinary work over the years that we've presented here, uh, and just the, the really interesting and engaging films that are coming out of uh, Colombia, uh, including the one we showed today. So it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled and honored to be able to uh, welcome Talia Osorio to our uh, festival. We wish you were here with us, Talia, in person, but technology is the next best thing. So. Uh, Please, uh, please say a few words, I, and I wish I could introduce you to our audience live, but, but they're here watching you on this uh, conversation. So uh, I, um, I welcome Talia Osorio, the director of uh, Horsemen of Paradise. Talia. Hello, thank you very much, um, Your Excellency, and uh, Jorge Londoño and Tom. Uh, thank you for letting us be here at the uh, Latin American Film Festival for us is um, it's it's fantastic to be here today and also to have all this audience and um, we have been working in this movie for about 15 years uh, that was the first time when I get to the Janus and uh, today also you are celebrating the 20, uh, 25 years of the festival. So I think so in, in a way we are like riding a horse, which uh, actually now it's, uh, it's meeting. Uh, and it's a big effort for all of us to be here. And um, I really appreciate that the embassy of Colombia in Canada look forward uh, to our films 
and make them be shown outside. So thank you so much. No, no, it's, it's a really pleasure for us, Talia, to have the opportunity, as I mentioned, to show a very big part of Colombia, but uh, the unknown uh, culture that we have in, in that area of our country, which, is, uh, which represents uh, uh, nearly 20% of our territory, so it's very important. But maybe if we can start talking about the, the film and uh, considering that the relationship between the humans and horses have been developed during centuries around the world, what, what do you think or what did you leave uh, or what did you learn about the, which psychological uh, issues or aspects does the, uh, the Colombians developed to establish a relationship with uh, the horses in, in the East Plains of Colombia? Um, thank you for, for that question. Uh, we could say historically, um, the horses came to, to Latin America by the chips with the Spaniards. And somehow our indigenous, which were initially the Llaneros that you have just seen, they, uh, well, some of them, most of them were killed because the, they, they came like horses where these uh, big arms were like the people that didn't have horses were, were not able to, to fight. But finally, what happened was that uh, once the, the Spaniards settled, settled down in our countries, um, these indigenous people took the horses to eat and somehow they start to create a relationship, a different relationship. And in, a, in some moment, they start to ride the horses. And this make them what we call the lanceros, which they were the ones who make the independence with Simon, with uh, Bolivar, with Simon Bolivar. They came, when, when the indigenous people learn to ride a horse and, and they have all the ability to fight, they, 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 they win. No, uh, so that's the part like the historical part. But in other, in the other hand, when I arrived to the Janos, um, I couldn't imagine these people were like poets in in a way, and that's why the the they are called cantos de vaqueria, which are uh, patrimonio universal uh, cultural de la humanidad, which means that. Uh, they make chants to the animals. They, 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 they create poetry in a way. Um, so once you are in a horse and you are in this landscape, a plain, plain, plain uh, place, I think your heart and your mind start to create um, different ways of thinking and of viewing life. And it's very different to to, to perceive life from a horse than from a car or from a bus or, for, or from a train. So this is a culture that uh, has been able uh, over years, over centuries, uh, to, to teach and to learn about their landscape and about how to um, uh, spoke about their land once they are riding a horse. So in, in this way, uh, the horse for the Llaneros is, is their family. Uh, they love them as much as they love their sons or their brothers or even their wife. So uh, horses have names. Uh, you usually have like different number of horses in your life and you will never forget them. And in a way, uh, you'll aim to die 
near your horse. So this is a big and deep relationship uh, mm -hmm. with horses. Incredible. That is amazing. I mean, um, I'd like to ask you, I mean, I, you would, um, that's a, an extraordinary, and you, and you certainly capture it in your film, <clears throat> this intangible uh, power of the relationships and of course their expression in song, uh, which is so beautiful and so also powerful. I'm wondering, you mentioned earlier uh, that it's been a 15 year journey for you. Um, if you could talk a little bit about how this film came to originate in your mind as an idea maybe, and then you thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a film about this, this whole culture, this whole landscape. Uh, tell us about the process of, of constructing this beautiful work over those, as you said earlier, a uh, decade and a half or so. Yeah. Um, well, all of this originated because my friend and co-producer and researcher of this film, which is Francisca Reyes, um, I was studying with her anthropology. I'm an anthropologist. And uh, she was doing her thesis. And her thesis was about the Janus because all of her family uh, over centuries have lived in the Janos and once she finished she finished her thesis and I I I have the opportunity to read it I I saw a movie there and she invited me to her to her land and she started like to teach me a little bit and I will always go with my camera <laughs> because uh, that, that was me like 15 years ago. I had a little camera and I will always go with it. Of course. And I, I, I remember that I saw a woman in a horse in the middle of, of, of nothing, <laughs> like in the middle of this land, plain land. And she will come with a donkey behind. She, she was riding her horse and with a donkey full of um, all, all what she needs for cooking, like uh, all, all, like she, she will have, and, and three dogs. And I remember her, like, how, how could she be, like, uh, she probably had just 10 years older than me. And I, I was really passionate about uh, who, who she was and, and why she was cooking for 40 men and doing these journeys. And so in a way, this is the image that, that just make me th think about a movie. And we start doing a first film, which is called Lasso in Affections, uh, which, is, uh, which talks about how petroleum arrived to these lands and how like all these cultures um, change. And, and initially I have like a, a feeling of this is going to end, like a really sad feeling. And that was like my first five or seven years um, getting in touch with the culture. But afterwards I, uh, I learned that it was not finishing, like that we should celebrate it because it was a life and all these people was alive. And there were children that would love to be what their fathers are actually. So um, I thought, okay, uh, we are not the, the cowboys that are ending. We are not the gauchos. No, we are the Janos and we are alive. So we decided to make this film, Horsemen of Paradise, to celebrate and not to be like uh, sad or disappointed or no, just just to say, hello, here we are, we are Colombians and we are uh, peasants and we are riders and we know a lot about our land. And uh, Talia, one, one question, the, this culture uh, covers only a Colombian territory or it also enters into Venezuelan territory? Uh, thank you very much because it's a very important uh, question. This is called the Orinoquia, which is uh, all, all these plains are in between Venezuela and Colombia. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically um, the frontier is because 
because the because the countries made it that the culture is the same exactly the same in Venezuela or in Colombia. Uh, so it's a vast territory. Usually, uh, it uh, has two seasons. Uh, when rain comes, uh, it, it has a lot of biodiversity also. So when when we have the rainy season, it will will see a lot of different animals. And when we have the the summer, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have uh, any more than these two seasons. And these are called mm, savanas inundables. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the most I think in a way it's the most nearest place like to to when you think about Africa and you think about the Janos and the Orinoquia, somehow it's just, we don't have there the elephants or the giraffes, <laughs> but we have uh, other animals there, like the the, the oso, oso palmero or a lot of birds. It's just a beautiful place. It's like a safari in a way. So what I did is that I will get in with my car, which, which was a Jeep, and we will uh, sometimes we'll get in a plane and sometimes by car and sometimes by horses uh, over these these years. But um, I think it's a vast territory and in a way it uh, it is like my Universal Studios after 15 years. Around <laughs> how many people uh, is represented by it, uh, this culture? Well, I I I can I can tell you that I, I don't mm -hmm. know I don't know, but it's I think it's millions of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's an extraordinary thing about all of the things that you're saying in terms of what struck me the most, and I, I mentioned it earlier about being Canadian and and having a particular relationship with a we are an enormous landscape with relatively speaking very few people. So there's plenty of, of space. Uh, and in our cinema, in the Canadian cinema, there are lots of films that deal with landscape in, as a kind of a character almost, um, but also as a theme. And of course, our climate is very, <clears throat> can be very dangerous and harsh in winter in particular. Um, but what fascinated me about your film too was the visual design that you uh, gave it for to capture the landscape uh, cinematically. Um, and it is such a dramatic uh, landscape uh, for me. I, I'm wondering how you approached when you were, as you said earlier, you're, you're thinking that this is a, you must celebrate the, the presence of this culture. It's not going away, it's not dying, it's here and present. Um, and how did then, I think the next question for me is, is like, okay, what did she think of how to shoot the landscapes? How, what kind of composition was she thinking when all that kind of stuff, you know? So if you could speak a little bit about that, because I think it's so evocative of a film uh, about uh, our relationship as humans and horses <laughs> uh, to the landscape. Um, and thank you also for that question. Like initially, when I shoot uh, Last Win Affections, and that was like 2010 probably, um, there were no drones, or maybe there were no, no we, we we couldn't rent a drone in Colombia. That was it was too expensive. It was like for Hollywood, maybe. <laughs> or uh, no, when I shoot Last One Affection, it that that was like 2005. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, when we arrived to to shoot um, Horsemen of Paradise, the technology have changed, and all the time when I start shooting in the Janos, like I saw all of these animals and this big territory and this like infinite landscape. And I was like, I can capture all what I was seeing. It was so mm -hmm. difficult to capture it from, from the land or even from the horse. So when GoPros arrives and, and, and drones, uh, our uh, DP, our director of photographer, which is uh, Daniel Trivino, he was amazing and he will like just show me a lot of what we could do. So we put GoPros in, in the horses, like in the front mm -hmm. of the horses. Mm -hmm. uh, we put GoPros in the chest of the riders. 
we gave the camera to the to the Janeros because and they are able of uh, like really um, going very fast and have a camera, <laughs> which we couldn't do. Like uh, when I first arrived to the Janos, I, I didn't knew to ride a horse. Yes, I didn't have any relation with uh, with nature, I think. I was just coming out of the university and uh, all what I have seen was the city, <laughs> more or less. Mm -hmm. So it was not only uh, how to shoot, but how to be there in Italy. And once we learn to be there, we start learning, for example, which horses are better to shoot <laughs> because some horses just stay still as a tripod, yes? <laughs> and some others, even they stop, they start like brr, brr. So you couldn't shoot in these horses. So we uh, bautized some of these horses like uh, the, the, with different names and we have our crew in horses also somehow. <laughs> Um, we also knew we couldn't have a camera that have separate lens because with the movement, it will damage. So we have to choose the correct camera, uh, and we have to be really light. I mean, with our equipment, because uh, these journeys are about eight hours every day. And uh, you can't have like a like a big equipment with with you, so you have to be very recursive, and also uh, like all the, the the like the father of Francisca, my the co-producer, is one of the owners of these lands. So he will also help us a lot because, for example, when the people is uh, like chasing the the horses or the cows, sometimes we'll have to say, cut, go again, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> and they will do it again for us because it's uh, very fast. All what happens there is very fast. And also for the animals, we need them to be like, uh, like to assimilate the drone and the, the, the sound of the drum, mm -hmm. because uh, it's uh, like we wish we, we could uh, like ruin all the, all, all the work <laughs> that they were doing. So it's, um, that's why we, we came back a lot of times and we shoot a lot of times, but the images that you see with the drone, some of the first images are also the first images uh, captured withdrawn in the Janus. Uh, uh, Talia, one, one question. You told us that the Janeros are not uh, gauchos, are not cowboys. Uh, who they are? Which are the main characteristics they have uh, to, to have their own culture? Well, they are not, but they are brothers, no? <laughs> of all of these cultures. I mean, all the cultures of riders uh, have, in a way, the same soul or the same love in their hearts. Um, but the Janeros particularly, mm, I will say, like to be a Janero is to be... Uh, the, usually what they say is like to learn how to sing it's art to learn how to uh, put the, ride a horse is like it's like an art it's, they look at themselves as an artistic way of of being and of living i don't know if i if this makes sense at all but it is like uh all their activities all what they know uh they consider it like uh, art. So in a way, they are artistic human beings in a, in a heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, for me, very, uh, uh, for me is 
very interesting to know that they have a special relationship also with uh, the earth, with uh, the, yeah. the territory. They, they not only have a special relation with their horses, but also with the earth. Yes, that's very important what you're saying, mm -hmm. because um, when I arrived there and here comes the Cholo Valderrama, uh, I remember, of course, I came from a university and like um, I studied first anthropology and then film. So I knew very much about, for example, how to use Excel. No, or Word or a computer. And then all of these Llaneros and more the Cholo Valderrama will laugh about me and they will say, here, your Excel is not useful. What are you doing with an Excel? No, or what are you doing with a computer here when you have Mother Earth teaching you every day? And for me, that was amazing, really amazing, because in some way, like I believe, I had disconnect myself from the earth, from, from yes, from, from the land. And uh, they will make me a lot of jokes. For example, I haven't studied anything, but I have this amount of cows. Or do you know how to uh, take a piece of meat? No, you only know how to go to the supermarket. Do you know how to, like a lot of things that I didn't knew and that I don't know. Uh, so I understand that yes, the only way to love and to learn about the land is being there. And they are there. Their culture makes them being there. And that's how they have all of this knowledge. But this knowledge, at the same time, it's not like uh, remunerated, it's not paid, it, it's like the knowledge of a peasant. So that's it. And, and I think this knowledge is the one that we all should have first that, than other knowledge. I'm interested, that's a really great point. <clears throat> I'm interested to know, um, given that they would tease you about your technological devices and your relationship to the world, not uh, that's a little bit alienated from the land let's say how did they react have they seen the film and, and if so uh, what was their response to your to your film about them um well the film had uh, yes they have seen the film most of them mm, our film was going to be released in cinema but uh, then the 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 COVID came in, <laughs> so all all the the cinemas were closed, and we were already in. I mean, we already had the press. We already like, and also I was about like eight months pregnant at that moment. <laughs> so I really needed to show the movie and just start to be mom. <laughs> So I, I I decided to make the movie to release it digitally, and this make uh, a big difference, so that a lot of people saw it, and uh, so it arrived to the Janus initially, uh, in in by internet, mm -hmm. and we start to receive all kind of like there were like there are different Janeros, the ones that are. At the landscape, at, at the land, like uh, like the ones that I shoot, and there are others that live in little towns, you know. Uh, so we start receiving all the all these uh, feedback, and uh, a lot of families like they will sit with their children, their grandfathers, and they will watch the movie once and once again because they they could play it in 48 hours that all the all the times that they wanted uh and so for them i mean um we have received a lot of really good comments from them uh i think they are proud uh 
I think uh, I would love to be Janera <laughs> in a way and not like, I mean, uh, for like not someone from the city looking after them, but someone inside their culture. I would love to be that person, but finally I, I am from, from the city. Um, but I think what happens here and, and Cholo says uh, it's, uh, we, we, like in the film, the Janos spoke. It's not only me as a director, it's not only them. I think that the, the big achievement is that we let the Jano spoke. And and that's in resume what I think happens with the with the movie in their hearts. Well, I want to thank you so much for your for your beautiful film and, and yes, for your open eyes and open ears to hear because now we have heard them. Uh, and it was an honor to present your film at uh, the Latin American Film Festival here in Ottawa. Um, and also to meet you, um, even though it's technological, it, it's still a meeting and it was lovely to hear your, your thoughts on the film. So thank you from behalf of the Canadian Film Institute. Thank you so much for your work and I want to thank also and, and turn it over to His Excellency uh, from the Embassy of Colombia. A, a huge thank you to the Embassy as well for making this happen uh, today, this conversation. It's been really, really wonderful to uh, to talk about uh, with you about your work. So, uh, muchas gracias. No, thanks to you, Tom. And once again, congratulations. And um, thank you for giving Colombia the opportunity uh, to show part of our culture. And also thanks to Talia to um, bring us or bring to Canada a part of uh, Colombia that is unknown for many people here in this beautiful country. And thanks for all of you, for all of you who, who had the opportunity to, to see this film today. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you much. much. And uh, just to for Tom and for the ambassador and for the people who is today seeing us, this is the first time that the movie is shown in a cinema uh, outside of our country. Uh, this is the first time that we are in, in a film festival uh, outside of our country. So uh, I'm very glad to know that uh, that that we are together in a way thank you